Hey Capazzo Mufasa, it's Brendan back with another video. So today we're shooting a wedding here. Uh, we're here at Peter's house. We're gonna do our getting ready shots. We're using and testing out the A7 IV. We're gonna test out the photo capabilities and the video capabilities. And we're gonna kind of give you like a first impression of our A7 IV today. And also do a BTS. We're gonna knock out two birds with one stone. So we got Steven with us here shooting video. Max behind the camera doing BTS. It's gonna be a great day. We, we gotta get started. We gotta get started. <laughs> So I'll show you straight The only thing that takes my breath away <laughs> All right guys, well, it's been a hot minute and been gone for about a month. It's been a very, very, very busy past month, but we're back with another BTS, a wedding BTS. And as you can tell, we're going to be doing the grooms getting ready. And it was about 30 degrees here in Texas, so we didn't have a lot of sunlight to work with. And so what we did, we ended up using that Godox light wand. We put it outside, positioned it outside on a stand, outside of the window. And then that was going to kind of create our artificial light and as you can see here we're putting peter right in front of the window getting our groom getting ready shots and sometimes you got to improvise and you know a lot of times we like to use natural light i always like to use natural light it is the best type of light however the situation here was we didn't have light coming in through the window so we needed to compensate by using that light wand and uh the getting ready shots i really don't like to do a lot of crazy stuff i mean Real simple stuff. I try to direct my clients or my couples um, in a way that makes it look natural and candid. I get a lot of inspiration from Taylor Jackson, making everything look nice and candid. So uh, as you're gonna see in the photos, there's not really a lot of like cozy stuff. I do, you know, tell people just to kind of like, hey, just stand in this position and, and get your coat on. Like, and that's pretty much as far as I'll instruct somebody. It's a little tight. Yeah. All right, cool. So we finished Peter's getting ready shots. I guess you saw how we kind of improvised there because we didn't have any light. It's 30 degrees here in Texas. That weather usually doesn't happen, so we kind of freak out when we don't have sunlight, but we kind of improvised and we got the shots. So now we're here at the girls' getting ready spot. We're here at the blow bar in McAllen. We got to do the details, dress shots, first looks, and then we're going to do a couple sessions. It's going to be a long day, so let's get it. Okay, oh, can you get a shot on my butt? Yeah, go for it. How's my butt look? It looks Black. amazing. All right, let's go. So we wrapped up Peter's getting ready and you know the getting ready doesn't really take us that long and we had to kind of rush over here to the blow bar and McAllen and that is to you know get all the getting ready and makeup shots for the bride and they're pretty important because uh, for the film or for the video we really need a lot of that footage. And for this wedding, we were hired for photo and video, which is an all day thing. We're pretty much there from the makeup all the way to the exit with sparklers, if they're gonna have any. And so you hear, we're just gonna get some detail shots. We're getting the details ready. Um, and these are kind of like the items that are kind of most important to Lorraine. And so, you know, we photograph those. And of course, Steven's there on the tripod, getting some panning shots, as you saw in the intro there. Um, and then I just kind of walk around and get some candid shots. There's not really anything here. Um, I'm not really using a light here. Um, the, there's a big, big window in the front, just letting a lot of natural light in. And then the walls are white and the ceiling is white. Um, they do have some like uh, tungsten bulbs in there kind of giving a little bit of a mix of a light But for the most part uh, a lot of the light was just kind of bouncing and it was just very like flat lighting all around So I didn't really use a flash in that instance But and it also makes it easier to go around and just get candidates of people without having to set up the flash um, And for this wedding particularly if you really want to see like how we're using lighting and stuff go, go to the end of the ceremony and also towards the reception to kind of see how we use a lighting because we do use off camera lighting especially during the reception because most of the receptions are gonna be super super dark um, but yeah I'm just run, running around getting candidates of everybody and again I'm not really instructing people um, I'm trying to stay out or outside of the little group but most of the time you know it's just uh, sometimes I gotta get in there um, and uh, again here's very few instruction just mostly for the video but I'm just saying hey Lorraine if you're gonna get your earrings on just stand by the window while you do it again I don't like to instruct my couples very 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 rarely do I tell them like hey can you do this 
specific pose. Most of the time I try to let them do their own thing and try not to ruin or mess up the wedding day, the, the, the natural events of the day. Um, and so here, this is one of those times where I'll actually instruct somebody like, hey, why don't you guys like cheer, throw your hands up in the air, that sort of thing. Um, and this is kind of the thing, uh, a lot of times you're gonna find yourself in situations where there's a lot of clutter, it's very cramped, and uh, you know, you're just gonna have to kind of make do. And here we're actually miking up the dress now for Lorraine, and what we're doing is we're using these Rycon stickies, and I'm putting a Rode Wireless Go setup, which is, you're gonna see there, boom. And so what we do is we tape the mic inside of the bra or the brassiere of the dress, right in the middle. Uh, we tape it up, and then we give her this thigh strap with the receiver, the wireless transmitter, and we do that before she gets the dress on. Obviously, I'm not gonna be doing that while she has the dress on. It's very inappropriate, because I'm, I'm a dude, so you know we have to do everything beforehand and so now she has a mic she's mic'd up she's ready to go because we're gonna head over to do the first look right after these photos and so we need to have her mic'd up and also uh, for the ceremony so your only chance to really mic the bride and the dress up is during the getting ready sections um, since we're doing both photo and video we need to make sure we have good clean audio we also mic up the priest and the groom but um, this is just one of those things that we have to do is when we mic up the bride, we got to, you know, make sure we use a lot of tape, a lot of stickies and then the thigh strap in order to get all of those shots. So we are at the next location, which is the Chateau on Fifth Avenue here in McAllen, Texas. It's actually a really, really popular spot here. I've uh, been getting a lot of requests recently to shoot here or shoot either an engagement session or the actual bridal couple photos. Couple bridal photos? You know what I mean. Anyway, so we're getting set up already. Lorraine is actually parked outside and uh, we're going to mic up Peter for the first look and get him ready. He's really nervous. Um, poor guy. He was super nervous the whole day, but, uh, you know, it just comes with part of getting married. Most of the people respond differently and some get really, really nervous. So, alrighty. So we're going to get the first look going and, um, ooh, ooh, there it is. First look out of the way. Boom. Um, a couple key tips here. You want to keep a uh, good distance away from your couple while they're doing the first look, uh, whether it's with, you know, the couple or the first, you know, the dad or mom or something. You definitely want to keep a distance. And you don't want to direct them you know, what to do uh, here. We're doing like a couple of second takes now, like for the video purposes. But that very first initial first look, you really want to stay away. Don't instruct. Don't talk. Don't ruin the moment. Just let them have their moment. Uh, don't instruct them and then uh, over time they get a little awkward and stuff and once you start sensing that they're acting a little awkward in front of each other then uh, that's probably usually a good time to end it and, and go on with the, the rest of the shooting day um, and then after the first look we start our couple session and me and Steven work together we kind of interchange uh, spots here so he's you know he takes turns like uh, taking video clips and that's just how we kind of work together uh, throughout a wedding day um, we put our couples in a position a pose or whatever uh, in a different like setting or a different composition um, and then you know I get my photo clips close-ups wide medium tights and then Steven does the same wide medium and tights for video um, and that's just kind of how we work together uh, we work with other videographers in the past that don't kind of do that courtesy um, and uh, you know that's kind of why me and Steven work so well together is because we we already kind of know like a good workflow for a wedding and um, here we're just running through a couple session if you haven't seen any of my tips or how I run through a couple session I mean I have plenty of videos online I could probably link one up there uh, but it's just basic stuff you know smell Lorraine's cheek put your guys foreheads together sit down interact for the video I kind of like will be in the background saying like hey make sure you rub your noses together that sort of thing um, and then also we need to make sure that we get the individual uh, photos. So right here we're getting Lorraine. Uh, we're on the 85 uh, lens in here with the A7 IV. So I'll pop a couple pictures there. But we're just doing some portraits here. And then uh, we're going to head outside uh, 
you know, to do the couples session, finish it up because we only had an hour. Uh, we're setting up a little backlight, a little rim light here. Uh, it was super overcast and we're actually shooting in the shade up against some uh, you know, background lighting. So it was actually kind of blowing out the background a little bit. Um, but we were still able to get some nice shots and then you're going to see here pretty uh, soon. I do another bridal portrait, but we use it as a kind of like silhouette it. And so that, that kind of worked out in our favor. Um, but yeah, we're just getting ready. Uh, going to finish up here pretty soon and head over to the ceremony. So now we're heading out into the ceremony and uh, we're getting the audio set up. I'm using the Zoom F6 and we're plugging directly into the board. Since we're doing photo and video, we want to make sure we capture great audio. And to my enjoyment, I saw the Sennheiser logo. So that means they're using all Sennheiser equipment, which means the audio is going to be crispy. And so we do that and we record everything, all the speeches, uh, vows, everything that everybody is saying is going directly into the Zoom F6. And actually that's the audio that I ended up using for the wedding video and their doc edits as well. However, we still also mic up the priest and Peter and Lorraine. If you remember earlier, we put a uh, microphone on her dress. So we have three sources of audio that are individual they're not synced up with our camera well actually even the zoom's not synced up but you know what i mean like we have three individual sources of audio and then we have a fourth source of audio which is the board where we plug into and that is usually the best one you have to be careful a little bit when you plug into the speakers sometimes uh, some sound uh, technicians or djs they don't want to allow you to plug into their board um, and if you want me to make a review or, or like a tutorial on how to do this, I'll, I'll be more than glad to let you know uh, how I do this. Um, but back to the speakers. So if you plug into the speakers, um, sometimes plugging into the speakers is not the best option. It gives you kind of like mid quality kind of audio. Um, so your best option is always doing the board and what we've learned is to have a couple of adapters. We have like a quarter inch to XLR adapter and as well as an XLR. Um, and there, I'm very happy listening to the priest and we're ready to roll, we're ready to knock out the ceremony. So, um, Lorraine also requested that she does a first look with her dad. So that's dad right there getting ready. And, uh, here we go. Now we're doing the first look with the dad and actually really enjoyed this first look. Um, as you can tell, um, there it is. It's so awesome. Yeah, the, the, the dad really got choked up here. Um, it's his only daughter, so, you know, it uh, can be kind of emotional. Uh, I know when my daughter gets married, I'm going to probably be the same way. So, <laughs> um, But, yeah, it was great, and uh, we're going to head out to the ceremony. Usually before the ceremony, as far as for photos, um, I was concerned. Um, I do get, like, a bunch of candidates, get a lot of candidates of the people, like, lining up you know, getting ready, trying to tell the story of the day, trying to capture just good candid moments of people laughing and, or, um, I think I got a couple shots of here, them, you know, setting up the boutonnieres and stuff, try to stay on a long lens, either on 85 prime or the 7200. Since this church is a lot bigger, we're going to be shooting on one camera body with a 7200, which is a seven four. And then my a seven three is going to have the 24 1.4 G master for the wide, wide shots doing a last sound check before everything gets going. Um, but yeah, those are the two cameras that I'm using. And of course, for video, um, we've got set up uh, two tripods, one on the left, one on the right, right there with 7200s on them. That's the FX3 and the A7S3 on the right, um, pointing towards the bride. And then we've got an A7S3 on a gimbal also, which Steven's going to be using. And so those are usually our three cameras. And what we do is just kind of keep them rolling. Um, it becomes easier to edit in uh, Final Cut Pro or Adobe, whatever you're using in post when you have one solid continuous clip, it's easier to sync up the audio 
with the the video so just kind of keep that in mind so whenever steven's on the gimbal we just kind of keep rolling as far as uh, video is concerned uh, and then photos i don't like to be up in the business of everybody during the ceremony and that's why i usually that's why i chose to use a 7200 for this case because um you know you get that ability to zoom in and then with this a7 IV, the little bit of a higher megapixel count i can actually go into APS-C mode and get a, even more reach from my 200 millimeters so it, it turns into like 250 or 260 millimeters when you're in crop mode and so make sure you always get the people in the front of the ceremony because those are usually the most important people to the couple which is like the parents and brothers sisters and everybody usually sitting very up front so you want to make sure you photograph them um, and then i just go around and when they're doing their vows the most important thing is to be on the opposite side of the person that's uh, speaking so like if the groom is speaking then i'll be photographing the bride because i want to see her reaction and she's usually not going to be talking or anything so if you're photographing somebody mid-sentence or when they're talking it's like their mouth is open it's almost like they're gagging they make they make weird faces while they're talking and so just kind of keep that in mind so whenever the bride is saying her vows i like to be on the bride side photographing the groom to see his reaction sometimes they're crying and stuff but the most important thing is that they're not talking um during the vows right because uh, because they're listening so um that's just a kind of like a key tip there because uh, again you, you don't want to be photographing people with their mouths like halfway open and then uh, the most important thing though uh one thing that we've started to learn is trying to uh, anticipate the first kiss uh, recently we've noticed that there's a lot of priests that uh, don't want to do the first kiss right at the very end they actually do it like mid ceremony which is super annoying uh, so you kind of try to have to anticipate that and the only way I can recommend that you anticipate that is just get a little bit more experience but there's been a couple I would say this past year we've already had like two two uh, ceremonies where the priest actually did the first kiss like mid ceremony like right after they did their vows um, and usually with the catholic mass or any type of christian ceremony you do the mass first and then at the very end you would do the first kiss so just kind of something to keep in mind if you're shooting like catholic mass or christian mass um, you got to kind of anticipate when the first kiss is going to happen so uh, it's very hard to explain but you know that first kiss man like it's uh, can be a little bit stressful especially if you're the first time working with a new priest or new pastor so and then here we're doing the death walk walking backwards without looking and we're gonna capture the couple coming down the aisle i really like these photos these are probably my favorite photos from the wedding or any wedding in, in general it's like that first moment when they're first getting married it's really nice and then a key tip here is also I like to follow them whenever they exit after they exit the church the building or whatever from getting married usually follow them because uh, they're also going to have like some moments and then of course like the uh, family is going to follow in shortly after and congratulate them so you get a really nice really nice candid shots when you follow them I usually don't stay at the end of the aisle photographing the exit of the bridal party I find that those uh, those photos aren't really that important it's usually these right here these candid moments when you're you know they're getting congratulated for 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 the new marriage and so that's what i do and i stay on the 24 get really nice up and close find that when you're on a 24 lens 24 millimeter lens and you're really nice up and up and close to people um it really makes you feel like you're there present so yeah here we're, we're also doing another death walk and here i'm actually in aperture priority mode because of the changing and lighting conditions i know a real pro would use manual mode but just using aperture priority just to make sure that my exposures are dialed in here we're going to do some group photos we're using the godox 600 with a softbox off to camera right and then also position behind me and then i feather it out i've done a tutorial like this before in my previous wedding videos but if you want a full tutorial just let me know and i'll gladly make it for you so favorite part of any wedding day is the reception 
And uh, because I get to use a lot more off-camera flash and my photos tend to be a little bit moodier during the reception, no more natural light. So here we're using a flash to camera right. Reason for that is if you could see there, the uh, cake is being backlit. So I got to kind of uh, compensate the exposure a little bit and then add a little flash onto it. So the background's not super blown out. And uh, reception's about to get started, but I got, you know, my flash already set up. Um, here I have it gelled now uh, to kind of match the lighting and uh, uh, one of the key lights was the um, is gelled actually so we're actually using the constant lights now uh, for video purposes so these are the 60x's which can change cover can change temperature color balance or whatever so uh, we use that to kind of match and if you notice like majority of, of the lights inside the reception hall are like this kind of like CTO half CTO color tungsten you know three to four thousand Kelvin so that's why we're using the 60x's instead uh, so we can kind of make sure our colors are matching and we don't have any mixing of color and so predominantly if the colors inside like if the lighting inside is tungsten you would use tungsten lighting and um, you know if it was daylight a lot of window light then you just use regular um, flash with no gel but anyway so yeah that's kind of why we're doing that uh, the grand entrances here and uh, off to camera right pinned up behind us is our key light and then if you notice we also have a rim light that is behind the couples or behind the people walking out to see their camera left um, and that's just kind of adding a little bit of rim um, adds a little bit of depth a little bit of you know interest in the photos so that's kind of why we're doing that and that's actually our main setup uh, we use constant lights because uh, for video um, it kind of gets annoying when you have like the flash popping off in the video footage so here we have a key light there you see on the left kind of keying her and we're shooting on the shadow side to create interest and then we have another light also lighting uh, Lorraine and Peter that one's actually a little bit more directional more like flat lighting um, we couldn't fit a light more off to the right uh, so but yeah that's it's kind of like we put two lights on stands uh, with some v-mount batteries uh, they're constant lights and makes it a little bit easier for us um, to kind of see where the light is and how the image is going to look, especially on a fast paced environment like a wedding. We can kind of just kind of tell. So. So, yeah, uh, we're just doing the speeches now. And um, and again, this is the lighting that we use. Like I can make a full in-depth tutorial on, on this. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys here and you see that right light. That's the light that's lighting the couple. Uh, it's right there on top right that you could see it there. Uh, that's one that lights the couple and then we have another light camera left that's actually um, more cross lighting uh, makes a little bit more contrasty adding a little bit more depth um, and you see, see in the images also so that's kind of how we light everything um, it's really important to light you know your your receptions uh, i know everyone wants to use natural light all the time and believe me i would more than prefer to do that but in the in instances of a, like a reception, you really want to make sure that you're you're, you're using off-camera flash. Uh, creates a lot of depth and then a lot of um, a lot of contrast. And we didn't get a chance to see the first dances, but here's the first dance of the night, which is technically the second dance, but whatever. Anyways, we're still using the same lighting principles. We have a key light behind us, camera right. And then in the camera left or here in the top right of this video is our rim light and that's it. And we can just go walking around uh, getting candidates of people. Um, and that's kind of how we do everything. Um, I try to get close to people during this time. You just want to make sure you don't get too close so you don't get like kicked, punched in the face by accident when people are getting crazy and stuff. But uh, most of the time I try to get on a 24 and get really, really close to people. Uh, so it makes you feel when you actually see the photo, it makes you feel like you're actually in the photo or you're actually present there. And so um, that's pretty much it. That's how much we do or pretty much how we do our receptions and the lighting and stuff. Like again, if you really want the full tutorial, just let me know down in the comments below. But that pretty much wraps up this wedding day. Uh, it was pretty, pretty uh, straightforward. Not any hiccups, nothing crazy happened where we had to like, you know problem solved throughout the wedding day which for me is perfect i don't i, I hate <laughs> when problems arise during a wedding so um you know all these surprises and stuff like that we don't like so we like a really just kind of straightforward wedding and uh, you know lorraine and P peter planned it out perfectly so 
um, it was great anyway so i hope you guys like the photos i hope you guys like the images and everything that we got uh, today and uh, we'll see you in the next one i know it's been a while but uh, we got more content like this coming your way